Work is both a term in everyday use and a specific term referring to a principle of physics. Work in the everyday sense is the nine to five or the pastime that you pursue all day for money. In physics, it means the distance an object will travel when subjected to a force. Work is a type of energy. Energy can be approached from two different directions. You can approach energy through a mechanical scenario, in which case it is called work or mechanical energy. This type of energy is that involved in moving physical objects set distances. It can be expressed in terms of horsepower to express the equivalent energy of a number of horses. The other way of approaching energy is through heat. This type of energy is called thermal energy. It is the energy given by a flame or heat source to another object to raise the temperature of the object. It can be taken away to lower the temperature of an object. It was the work of James Jewell, a brewer, who showed that both of these types of energy are the same. This is why the unit for energy is the Joule, symbol J. However, we still differentiate energy equations for both heat and mechanics as they are more useful in their separate forms. The symbol for thermal energy is Q, or more usually E. It is covered in more detail in a separate podcast. The symbol for mechanical energy, or work, is W, and it is equivalent to the force applied to an object in the direction of that force, multiplied by the displacement of the object subjected to the force. If you apply a force to an object, it will move. More correctly, as we have learned in other podcasts, it will accelerate. In the study of energy, we are not concerned with acceleration just yet. Mechanical energy is merely a fixed amount that is required to move an object a certain distance. In order to move a block of mass one kilogram, you apply a force of one newton. You apply this force straight upwards so that the block is raised against gravity. The object does not move as it hasn't overcome gravity. In these situations, we'll only consider the overall forces applied to an object. So, in this case, the one Newton stated would be the overall force after subtracting gravity. You lift this object straight up and you measure the distance that you have raised the block vertically as one meter. In order to do this, you have given the block one joule of energy because mechanical energy is force multiplied by distance travelled in direction of the force. 1 times 1 is 1. If you wished to raise it a further metre, you would have to give the block a further 1 joule of energy, or 2 joules in total from the start point. If you gave the object 12 joules of energy in total, it would move 12 metres into the air, as long as the force was applied vertically. Instead of the block having the force applied uniformly, you now hit the block off-centre, causing it to move in a direction other than vertically. This happens all the time in ball-based games. You almost never hit the ball so that it moves off in the same direction as the force you applied. In this situation, you want to know how much of the maximum energy involved is transferred to the object. If you hit the object square, all the force will be transferred to the object, and so all the energy. However, let us say that you now hit the object so that it flies off at an angle of 45 degrees to the direction of the force you applied. The amount of energy the object has is proportional to the amount of force it receives from its interaction with the object giving the force. The difference between the direction of the force and the direction the object travels can be given as an angle theta. Let's assume that the object travels horizontally and the force was applied at an angle of 45 degrees to the horizontal. How much of the force acts horizontally in them in the direction the object moves? 
If we draw out this scenario, we can see the math mathematics more clearly using soccer toa. The direction the object travels is horizontal. The force applied to the object is at 45 degrees to the horizontal, and we want to work out the horizontal components of this force. The hypotenuse of our right angle triangle is the force applied, 12 newtons. The angle is 45 degrees, and the length we want is adjacent to this angle. Therefore, we use the car section of Sokotoa. Cosine theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Rearranging the equation gives us a value for the force in the direction of travel of the object as 12 cos 45. This is in relation to the original force applied. It turns out that you do not need to do this for every situation involving a deflection force. You need only measure the angle between the applied force and the direction the object moved in. The relationship between the forces is always the force times by the cosine of the angle between them. That is, the direction of the force and the direction the object moves in. As energy is force times displacement travelled in the direction of the force, we can say that for all forces and all angles, the energy associated with the situation is force multiplied by displacement multiplied by the cosine function of the angle between the direction of the force and the direction of movement.